Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is the weekend edition of Quick Study Television, Bible Discovery TV. Janice, we're here and this is gonna be good today. Yes, it is. Corey is with us. Tell us what you're doing, Corey. Well, on the weekend programs is when we normally do a chapter by chapter recap of everything that we've looked at throughout the week. But we're in the book of Psalms, so it's a little bit difficult to do that with ancient song lyrics. So today we're all going to choose something that we learned this week and we are going to highlight it. Psalm 85. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. Selah. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Psalm 85. You know, the weekend edition is a, an edition when we spend a little more time teaching and we also spend time in, in the discussion. Today, we learn some interesting things. It's pretty clear in the world today that nations look out for themselves first. Absolutely true. Think about that. Moral decisions are secondary to economic ones. Think about that. The leaders that have risen to power or been elected make decisions for how their nation will go with or against the ways of God. Even non-action is action. Regardless of where you live and are living or whether or not you agree with your government leaders, you know, the Bible shows us that we should be praying for our nations. God can turn things around for us. The end of time will be interesting because the world seems to be united under one leader. Now that's in the Bible. And when this happens, I believe that Christians will be taken away. It's also in the Bible. Now, these people who are standing before God, interceding for their homeland, suddenly are gone into the safety of God's presence. Jesus Christ will return and he will come and he will judge the whole world. But until then, Psalm 85 is a great prayer for our nations. When we modify our lives to follow God, things change. That's really interesting, isn't it? Things, things change. And that's the, the funny thing about it is everybody talks about people don't change. Yes, they do. The Holy Spirit changes people. People can't change themselves, but the Holy Spirit can change people. And I'm excited about that because the Holy Spirit has changed me through the years. Now, you can talk to my wife or people closest to me and ask them, has Rod changed or he's always been a hard guy and a, and a stupid guy? Well, I submit to them. They can tell you whether I changed or not. And that's very interesting. And actually your family can tell you whether you've changed or not, if you've allowed God to work in your life. But thank you so much for your giving. We really appreciate it. It helped us. The last three months have been, have been good. We've been able to stay alive. And so thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. That's how we live around here. 
And uh, so I just want to say that you can go to the Bible guide and go to today's passages because they're good. You can get a Bible guide by writing to us or calling us, or here you go on the weekend, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, because when you go there and make a donation, it takes you to the PDF files and you can download them. Or you can send us a message and we'll send you a Bible guide. So that's very, very important. Now, today on this program, we get to study somewhat on the internet or on TV, wherever you're at, for our nations. I find this fascinating. Uh, you talk about nations, people are really interested in this. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm a dual citizen of the United States and Canada, and it's fascinating how that uh, many nations, when I was young, I was 17 years old, I went around the world and the Lord really touched me and I saw some things in India, I saw some things in the Philippine Islands, saw some things, of course, in Germany, saw some things in different places. But I want to tell you that God speaks to us if we listen to him. And if we allow the things in our life to teach us. So Father, today, I pray that you would teach us. We are broadcasting to many nations of the world. Of the 188 some economic nations, most of them get this broadcast. So Lord, I pray in Jesus name that you would help people to hear your word. You know, I don't want them to hear a citizenship of any kind. I want them to hear heaven. I want them to hear your word. And for that to happen, I have to get out of the way. So help me to move. And I'm just going to read your scripture and allow your Holy Spirit to come in and begin to teach people and show them your ways and teach them your paths. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we said together, amen. Look at the scripture. This is important. Psalm 85, 1 to 7. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. What's he talking about? Well, keep reading. You have forgiven, there's that word again, forgiven. You've forgiven the iniquity of your people. God has forgiven them. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger and restored us. O oh, God of our salvation, God of our salvation, look at that. This is the Old Testament. And cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not receive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Look at that prayer. Listen, that's amazing. God gives us a way to pray for our nations, and we should. Let us pray to God on behalf of all of those who do not know him in our nations. Boy, I want to tell you something. That's important. Have you prayed for all the people who don't know the Lord in your nation? Good question, isn't it? We should. Lord, I pray for everybody in the United States of America who does not know you, may they see you and know you. I pray for everybody in Canada who does not know you. May they see your truth and know you today. And then I pray for the rest of the world, Lord. May all the people who see you and know you in Jesus' name, because God's will is that none perish. We have to pray for them. Now, I know there's free will choice here, but at the same time, we must pray every day. Lord, help them, save them. Scripture, 85.8. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. He'll speak peace, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. You know, this gets interesting because the second point is God's salvation is inside of those who know him. God's salvation is in us, beloved. As we pray, we get our mind off of judgment. We're not here to judge people. He did that. He shouldn't have done that. He, you know, we need to stop doing that. We need to just pray and we need to pray for our nations, pray for elections, pray. For, and then after we've done the most important thing, praying in the name of Jesus Christ, then we can vote. 
Because the most important thing a believer in Jesus Christ is to pray for the nation. Pray that God would do what he needs to do and that he would bring the people he needs to bring. And then once God does it, we need to stop complaining about it and begin to pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ and not continually complain about them. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to hear that. Now, Psalm 85, verse 10 says, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Now, this becomes interesting. Righteousness is being right with God of the Bible. That's what righteousness is. Right with the God of the Bible. When we modify our lives to follow God, modify our lives to follow God, things change. But it doesn't change if we don't modify. We can believe this and believe that and say this and say that. It doesn't matter what we say doesn't matter what we believe. It matters what we do. And if we've modified our lives to follow God, then everything we believe, everything we say, and everything we do will start to change. And God will bring peace back. God will bring protection back. God will bring things back that we have rejected. And I want to tell you something. We need a touch from God in this world. We need a revival. We need God. Now in China, they have the biggest church in the world. And we need God to move and make changes. And Father, I pray today that the changes would be made. I pray today that, that we would change. Help us, Lord, as we bow before you. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, activate yourself in us. Come in us. Teach us, show us to change our ways to follow you to follow the word of God in Jesus' wonderful name. This is what we pray. And we ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. And every single person listening to me who believes in Jesus said, amen. Well, we are here on the weekend edition of uh, Bible Discovery TV, and this is a fascinating time. I, I love this because the Psalms, I have 150 favorite Psalms, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 150 chapters, and every one of those chapters is my favorite. Now, I was going to talk, I said yesterday on the Friday program, I was going to talk about Psalm 21, but I have to wait till the Monday program, even though I may not do it on the Monday program. But I can't talk about it today because it's not in our reading, and Corey's helping us. Corey, what's our reading? <laughs> so uh, our reading for this whole week was we ch we covered Psalm chapters 60 through 89. So you need to contain yourself, Dad, between <laughs> Psalm 60 and Psalm 89. I shall okay. contain myself. And just to prove it, uh, I've got a Psalm 77, but you go first. I'm just showing <laughs> that I contain myself. So anyway. <laughs> Okay, so, so normally we do a chapter by chapter recap uh, going through all the things that we, we learned and, and everything that, the, that has happened in the Bible this week to get anyone who has fallen behind caught up. But in the Psalms, this is a tremendously difficult thing because it's not as if we're following a narrative. It, there's no history that's being unfolded here. It's just lyrics to songs. Uh, so for, for this time when we're in the book of Psalms, we're all just choosing something uh, that we want to highlight that we learned or that struck us particularly, you know, in a, in a, in a mighty way this week. So I want to bring you to Psalm cha chapter 63. It's, it's, um, it was one of my favorites this week. Uh, and it tells us, it's, it's one of the ones where the superscript tells us that's the little verse before the song gets started. It says, a Psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. So this is historically grounded, which is really fun. I love that. 
And the very first couple of verses say, you, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So right away, we realize not only from the superscript that David was in the desert at this point, but that he's not doing great. He is longing for God. He's not feeling like he's in a very good place. This is, this is a tough position that he's in. And then David goes on to say, I have seen you in the sanctuary. I've beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So, you know, he he is making throughout this whole psalm, David is drawing strength from remembering the experiences that he has had with God in the past. And I think that's so important because this is a very practical way for you and I to also live our lives because we are going to go through really difficult times, both physically and emotionally uh, and, and spiritually. There are times where it's just so hard. It feels like our lives are falling apart. Maybe we're grieving. Maybe we're going through depression or anxiety. And it just feels like we're alone. We're in a desert. Uh, and like David says, you know, my whole being longs for you, God, which it, so it means if we feel as if we're absent from the presence of God, then David does this discipline. He goes, but I've seen you in the sanctuary. I've beheld your power. I've beheld your glory. So he's remembering. And this concept is all throughout the whole Old and New Testaments where we have this hope, we have this anchor, and we have to remind ourselves about who God is. And that remembrance is going to get us through those times where we feel incredibly weak. That's how, that's one of the ways how God's strength can make us strong in our weakness. Um, and just because uh, I, the, the history part really it gets my juices flowing, when David says specifically uh, in verse two, I have seen you in the sanctuary, that sanctuary at that point, it, when David is alive and writing this, would have been the tent tabernacle. And we know from the accounts of the Bible of Solomon's reign that the tent tabernacle was actually set up in the city of Gibeon. So that's what David would have been referring to there in one of his pilgrimages to the city of Gibeon. He would have had this experience with God. Very so that that's the song that I wanted to bring up. How about you guys? I think that's great, Janice. Oh, we're going to come right to me. Yeah. Okay, well, I really enjoy, we didn't study it specifically on a day, but it was, of a, a, a course, in, in included in our reading because we read everything in the Bible. Psalm 67, it's an invocation and a doxology. It's just a short Psalm. There's only seven verses, but I love it. It's a reminder. It's asking God to bless us, to have his face to shine upon us and for us to respond to him. Let me read it. God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. I think that's, that's great. Mine. That's excellent. And Corey, there's only one other thing to do. Ryan, <laughs> What in the world is your favorite psalm? Well, you know, I just, I love the fact that the psalms are prayers. They're songs, but they're prayers. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, well, I don't know how to pray. A lot of people come to the Lord and they're new Christians. Oh, I don't know how to pray. Um, well, God's given us 150 different prayers here. And um, I know they've really meant a lot to me. You know, God's teaching us how to pray. And, and I just want to highlight uh, Psalm 62 here. And it says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence. They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. 
Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard, that you, O God, are strong, and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, that's really good. Uh, the Psalms are, are full of, of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you all stayed in the 60s, but uh, one of the Psalms that's meaningful to me is Psalm 77. And I love that Psalm. And um, it starts like this. It's a Psalm of David or a Psalm of Asaph, sorry. And uh, it, it's written to the choir master. And it's something that is very important that we focus on. Verse one says, I cry aloud to the Lord. Now, if you're a choir master and the choir has to sing this, think about how he tells the choir, you have to sing this beginning, I cry aloud to the Lord. You don't sing, I cry aloud to the Lord. You sing, I cry aloud to the Lord. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. What a way to start a song. And then it says here, in the day of trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying, without being tired. It's interesting. My soul refreshes to be comforted. He's talking about how God helps him. When I remember God, I moan. Now, how do you tell a choir to sing that? But you just have to, you just have to get creative and sing it. When I meditate, my spirit faints. That's what it says. And then in the part of these verses, uh, 20 verses, it says in verse four, you hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I cannot speak. Listen to that. He says here, I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. He's mentioning about meditation, which we have lost the idea for. But let me meditate in my heart. And then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has the steadfast love forever ceased? And his promises at the end, of, at the end for all of time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Yeah, I mean, you're telling a choir to sing this. It's amazing. And then I said, I will appeal to this. He remembers. He said the, the, the author remembers God, who he is. I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High, the strength of God, the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. It's holy. What God is great like our God? Now listen to that question. What God is great like our God? He asked the question. Well, that's a really good one. You are the God who works wonders, and you have made me known. Your might is among the peoples. Wow. You, with your arm, redeemed your people. The children of Jacob and Joseph, when the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The waters were afraid. Can you imagine that? Indeed, the deep trembled. The deep water trembled. Look at that. Look what he's saying here. This is amazing. The clouds poured out water and the skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world and the earth trembled and was in shock and shook. Your way was through the seas, your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. 
you led the people like a flock, and the hand of Moses and Aaron was there. I, I, I just need to tell you that that's an amazing psalm. That's an amazing psalm. And that's what the psalms are. I encourage you to read them. I encourage you to pray them. I encourage you to sing them. I'd love to hear a choir sing that. There's no way that a uh, choir would sing that and people would not be impressed. But uh, I've never heard a choir do that. So that'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully somebody will hear this and somebody musical will do it. That'll be great. Anyway, uh, that's the Psalms this week. And uh, as we continue next week, we're going to study more. There's 150 of these pieces of music uh, in the book. And I want to remind you that uh, if you need God to touch you, he will. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ right now that you would reach out and touch the people who are calling your name. Help them, Lord, to find you. And thank you, Father, for all that you are doing and continue to do. Because even though your footprints cannot be seen, the work of your hand is seen everywhere. Show yourself, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>